Continuing on with our AMD head-to-head -head series, we wanted to see which CPU from AMD is the best for gaming. While we all know that the 7800X 3D is a gaming monster, AMD also have the flagship Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. And being a higher end model, you'd expect it to perform better, especially as it costs more money. So we threw both CPUs into the gauntlet in 42 games at three resolutions to get a definitive answer as to what the best AMD gaming processor is right now. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So this is a bit of an odd one today because both CPUs are X3D branded meaning that they both sport 3D vCache, though the 7950X3D comes in significantly higher at 128 megabytes total, compared to 96 megabytes on the 7800X3D. Beyond that, the 7800X3D comes in with eight cores and 16 threads, compared to this with a whopping 16 cores and 32 threads, so double. The clock speeds on the 7800X3D sits at 4.2 GHz for the base clock and up to 5 GHz on the boost clock, while the Ryzen 9 base CPU comes in at the same 4.2 GHz base clock but has a max boost speed of up to 5.7 GHz. Now we all know that the majority of the games on the market only utilise a few cores and clock speed and cache play quite a big part, so it's going to be a kind of interesting one to see how this actually plays out. Especially as, even though both CPUs come in with an identical 120 watt TDP, the 7950X3D packs kind of a lot more cores and threads into the area, meaning that in theory it will get hotter, and that can affect the clock speed somewhat. And this is the reason why we wanted to put these two CPUs in a head to head. Now I'm under no illusion that the 7950X3D is a gaming processor, because it's not, while the 7800X3D is firmly set on being just that. The Ryzen 9 instead is a workhorse of a CPU that can just utilize the technologies in gaming that can lead to much higher frame rates. So onto the testing, as we put both CPUs through their paces in a total of 42 games and at three resolutions. To test, we use the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master with 32 gig of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, 6,000 megahertz CL30 memory. For all of our testing, we used an Inno 3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC to rid the system of any GPU-based bottlenecks. And the latest version of Windows 11 was used with the latest drivers. All of the testing data is fresh, so everything is as up-to-date as it can be. And while we will be showing 1080, 1440, and 4K, 1080p really is the focus here, as this is where the CPU utilization is at its highest. We've also tested both processors in a total of 42 games and we'll be showing 15 here today while also looking at the percentage differences between the two in all 42 titles. Though if you do want to see the individual data for all 42 games then we will be putting them up onto our Patreon where you also get a ton of other cool and exclusive benefits as well as helping to support everything that we do on the channel. So with that out of the way let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting things off with a Plague Tale Requiem, and right away we can see that the two processors are actually pretty close together in terms of performance, with all resolutions coming in with a margin of error difference. 1080p however does see the 7800X3D taking a small lead of just 2 FPS, while 1440p switches things around and lets the 7950X3D move ahead, but only by 1 frame per second. Then at 4K, the two CPUs are seeing exactly the same performance in the averages, with the Ryzen 9 taking a very small lead in the lows, but not enough to take notice. Next up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and here the two processors start to split apart a bit, with the 7800X3D edging ahead of the 7950X3D, now with a 4% lead over the more expensive chip. This then falls back to margin of error at 3% at 1440p, whilst 4K sees it go back up again to 4%. So whether you could argue that all three of these resolutions performed within a margin of error of each other is up for debate, but we can say with confidence that you're probably not really going to notice a difference anyway. But if you're just about gaming, then the 7800X3D is looking to be the right choice. 
Baldur's Gate 3 is much the same as Plague Tale as we see the two CPUs performing pretty much identically at all resolutions, with the 7950X 3D taking a single frame lead at 1080p, whilst 1440p and 4K have the 7800X 3D as the one ahead, but still only by that one frame. 1080p and 1440p both had the Ryzen 7 perform a little better in the lows, even if only marginally, but this increase is larger than the separation of the two CPUs that we saw in the averages. So again, given the cheaper price point, it's a clear win for the 7800X 3D. Moving on to Call of Duty and we are again seeing the two chips at pretty much the same frame rates across the board. 1080 and 1440p are both led by the 7800X 3D by a few frames, whilst 4K flips things around and now sees the 7950X 3D on top. These improvements are all still, of course, only margin of error increases of a few frames here and there, but for the sake of comparison, it's still worth mentioning. With Counter-Strike 2, we actually start to see something interesting, and at 1080p, the gap between the two CPUs is pretty impressive. At 1080, the 7800X3D is ahead of the 7950X3D by a fairly large 23%, which in my opinion doesn't fully do this justice, as that works out as a jump in performance of 110 frames per second, which is pretty ridiculous overall. 1440p then sees this jump increase by an extra 3%, now leaving the Ryzen 7 26% ahead of the Ryzen 9. Then at 4K, the difference decreases a smidge to 24%, so nothing to complain about, and if you found yourself with a 7800X 3D, then you'd be more than happy with this kind of increase, given the lower cost. Cyberpunk is next, and we see similar but more tame results to CS2, with the 7800X 3D outperforming the 7950X 3D by 14% at 1080p, though the low figures actually came in much more similar. Then at 1440p the gap shrinks to 7% which is still more than nice to see when you're paying less for the CPU. 4K does what you've come to expect of it and lets the GPU take over, and now the two chips are pretty much on par with each other with only one frame separating them. It's worth mentioning however that the 7800X 3D does see 8% more performance in the lows here, and while it doesn't account for much, it does go towards making the gameplay feel just that little bit smoother. Enabling ray tracing makes the processors lock up a bit and as a result all three resolutions have the average FPS of the processors completely identical, with the only difference between the two coming by the way of the 1% lows. So to take a quick look there we can see that at 1080p the 7950X 3D actually takes a rare win with 5% more frames, and this win continues on into 1440p, where we see the same 5% lead over the 7800X 3D. 4K does see the two CPUs trade places in the lows, but this is only by a margin of error of a single frame per second, so there's not really much to note here. F123 has something a bit different, as at 1080p the 7800X 3D manages to sit a respectable 9% ahead of the Ryzen 9 CPU. It stays ahead at 1440p, but by a smaller margin of 4% this time, so arguably margin of error, and then 4K unsurprisingly makes the two CPUs drop to borderline identical performance. So once again, I find myself saying that you really aren't going to notice this level of difference at this resolution, but at the lower resolution, there's definitely points of contention. Next up is Far Cry 6, where the Ryzen 7 takes top spot once again, and this time by a small 3% at 1080p, with a much more impressive 16% in the lows. 1440p is much the same, and the 7800X 3D manages to lead by 4%, which is barely better than the lower resolution, and again we see better gains in the lows, as this time around we see a difference of 14% which should be enough to make for a noticeably smoother gameplay experience. 4K does as you would expect, with the two CPUs now falling neck and neck with each other, with just one frame per second between them. Though the lows do remain the strong point, and with 13% more performance for a lower cost, you'd be silly to complain. Moving on to Hogwarts Legacy, and here at 1080p, we actually see the 7950X 3D taking a small increase in performance of 3% over the Ryzen 7. This is only margin of error though, but it is something, unlike 1440p and 4K, where the CPUs perform pretty much identically, with only 4K seeing a 1fps difference in the averages in favour to the Ryzen 7. So this game, among others, has been a good example of how these two CPUs are so similar in performance, and how for gaming, you really can just save your money. Spider-Man Remastered is next, and here we find that every resolution sees a margin of error difference between the two CPUs. This isn't exactly what we want to be seeing so frequently, as for more money you'd expect, or at least hope, for more performance, but in games it really doesn't seem to be the case. At the very least, there is some difference in the lows, where at 1080p and 1440p, the 7800X 3D does sit a small margin of error ahead, though 4K, however, has the two CPUs at exactly the same frame rate. So again, 4K really doesn't make a difference. 
Turning on ray tracing does something unexpected and now we see the 7950X3D taking a pretty substantial win at 1080p and 1440p, with it seeing 21% more performance at 1080p and 17% more at 1440p. Given what we've seen so far, this is a pretty refreshing change and does help to start to justify the 7950X3D, if only by a bit. Even 4K manages to stay ahead, even if only by 4%, which isn't a lot and isn't going to be noticeable, but it is enough to be on the cusp of margin of error. And given how little I've been able to say it, I'll take this opportunity to say this is a win for the 7950X3D. As nice as it is to see a win from the Ryzen 9, it's pretty short-lived, as when we move on to Microsoft Flight Sim, we see the 7800X3D all of a sudden taking the lead again. And at 1080p, we see it sitting ahead by 7% in the averages, with a smaller 6% lead in the lows. This then increases at 1440p to 10%, with the lows also increasing, but this time to a hefty 17%. Then at 4K, the 7800X3D manages to remain in front, even if it is by a smaller margin of 7%. So across the board here, we're seeing some decent numbers, and it's nothing that you'd be disappointed with. Remnant 2 is next, and here we see the Ryzen 7 taking an early lead at 1080p of 7%, but it actually falls behind in the lows by a more substantial 9%, which means you could be getting a slightly rougher gameplay experience. Then at 1440p, the average FPS becomes identical between the two CPUs, but the 7800X3D remains behind in the lows, falling behind the 7950X3D by 11%, which is even more substantial. 4K again sees the averages pretty much the same, but there is a 2 FPS lead in favour of the 7800X3D here, even if it seems that to take this win, the Ryzen 7 had to sacrifice those frames from the lows, resulting in a slightly less consistent overall experience. Finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion, where at 1080p we have a pretty good start from the 7800X3D, as it pushes ahead of the 7950X3D by 15%. At 1440p, this naturally decreases and now sits at 5%, though what's worth pointing out is that this percentage decrease is largely down to the Ryzen 9 CPU, which sees almost no decrease in performance when you increase the resolution, which results in a much smaller gap than you'd expect otherwise. But it does mean that at 1080p and 1440p, you're getting a pretty consistent experience with the Ryzen 9. To finish up at 4K and to absolutely no one's surprise, the performance is almost the same from both CPUs, but the 7800X3D does actually fall behind a little here, if only by 3%. So again, margin of error. So some very interesting results, though things played out pretty much as expected in terms of the results being close in some titles, but having some differences in a few key games. Now to get a better idea as to how things did, it's worth taking a look at the full 42 games and how they compare when pitting both CPUs against each other. It's here when we look at the percentage differences at 1080p that we see that the 7800X3D is ahead of the 7950X3D by around 4%, and takes quite a few wins with the standout title coming by the way of Hunt Showdown, where we see the largest difference with a pretty staggering 41%. Now, the 7950X3D does take a much smaller set of wins with the highest performance increase seen coming by way of Spider-Man with ray tracing enabled. While the majority of all these titles do actually fall within the margin of error territory, and there are only a few kind of standout games. So all in all here, not bad for a cheaper processor. When we switch to looking at the differences in the lows, we see that the 7800X3D increases its lead with 5% more performance when compared to the 7950X3D. Less titles fall within margin of error here, while the 7950X3D manages to gain a few more games where it performs better than the Ryzen 7. Despite the larger number of titles in favour of the Ryzen 9, they are mostly within margin of error, and the two best performing games being Remnant 2 and Spider-Man with Ray Tracing both perform with a smaller gap than what we saw in the averages, and as a result, it really doesn't do much for the 7950X3D in the standings. Meanwhile, the 7800X3D sees a massive boost in its best performing game, again coming by way of Hunt Showdown with 56% more frames in the lows. This is actually double the difference we see with the next two best performing games being Rainbow Six Siege and Counter-Strike 2, and they in turn are more than double the performance of Remnant 2 and Spider-Man with ray tracing enabled. So whilst this is a bit of a blow for the value of the 7950X3D, it does just highlight how much better the 7800X3D is for gaming. 
To fully appreciate the value of the Ryzen 7, we need to look at the cost per frame and overall average FPS, where we see the 7800X3D taking a lead immediately with 5% more performance on average at 1080p for quite the substantial 37% less cost per frame, coming in at just $1.52 per frame compared to the Ryzen 9's $2.44 per frame. 1440p is pretty much the same, but the performance gap does decrease to just 2%, which is arguably margin of error. What isn't margin of error though is the massive 56% more cost per frame from buying the 7950X3D at this resolution. For gaming and for price, the Ryzen 7 is clearly the more efficient of the two processors, with a small increase up to $1.73 per frame from 1080p, while the 7950X3D comes in at $2.70 per frame. Now, 4K is always the most damning, and well, that's no different here. The two processors perform nigh on identical in performance with a margin of error jump going to the cheaper CPU. And cheaper is underselling just how different the prices are. To buy the 7950X3D, you need to spend 51% more for the CPU. And if you are planning to use it for 4K gaming, then that would lead you to pay $4 per frame versus the 7800X3D's $2.60 per frame, which is 53% less cost per frame for a margin of error performance jump. So this chart really just has put the final nail in the coffin of the 7950X3D, at least in terms of gaming. So coming into this, you probably knew which way this was going to go. But if you're maybe new to AMD and the 3D Vcash scene, you may have been under the kind of thinking that the higher end chip would be the better performing. And while it is close in terms of raw performance, separated by a little more than margin of error, there's a lot more to it. Now, the 7800X3D was always designed to be a gaming processor, while the 7950X3D is, I guess, more geared towards people who need raw horsepower for editing, rendering, and general workload based tasks, but without sacrificing in terms of gaming, if they you know, want to use their machine for multiple purposes. What is clear is that the 7800X3D offers far superior value across the board. But again, that's nothing really of surprise, especially when you're getting similar performance, but paying a lot more or a lot less for it. The good news is that the 7950X3D has seen a drop in price from its original launch price of $699 to now just a little under $600. But the 7800X3D has seen the same, down from $449 at launch to $384. So that's just helped to widen that cost per frame gap even more. Now, if you were considering either of these CPUs, I'd get you to ask yourself the question about what you want your machine to do. If it's purely for gaming, then go for the 7800X3D out of these two CPUs. But if you will be utilizing the cores and threads for workload tasks, then the 7950X3D may be the one for you if you're also going to use it for gaming. Though if you're not, firstly, why are you watching this gaming related video? And secondly, just go and save some money and buy a non X3D part. So there you have it. That's gonna about do it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then you can help support us over on Patreon, where you'll get a ton of really cool benefits, including exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, access to all of our charts, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.